One of the problems that we needed to solve was dealing with this million lines of code, and, and it's, it's actually a, a staggeringly complex problem ultimately to deal with it. And uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, experience with managing large Java code base, so we figured let's talk about how we'd be able to take that experience and translate it over into the JavaScript world. And what we basically came up with was three types of equivalents that we wanted to get to. One of them was semantic equivalence, which is basically saying whatever you understand that you did in, in Java and work for you in Java should be concepts that would semantically translate well into JavaScript. The second one would be structural equivalence. The way you wrote your code and the way it was structured should be similar to the way you should be able to do that in JavaScript. And then syntactical equivalence, which is basically saying for each of the constructs, assignments, and, and your loops and your ifs and stuff, you would want to see similar syntactical constructs in the, in the JavaScript world. Now, if you talk about the syntactical ones first, those aren't too hard to possibly imagine. Most people could see them in kind of syntax translation where the if statements, the while loops, the, the equals and assignments and so forth all work the same way. That's not too hard to kind of tackle. The structural uh, equivalence starts getting a little bit more interesting because you've got some interesting uh, structures in, in, in Java to talk about. So you have packages, you have your classes, you have interfaces, you have enums, you have formal constructors, you have static initialization. So all of a sudden now making that work in, in JavaScript starts becoming a little bit more of an issue. And then semantics. Now all of a sudden you start bringing in real complex issues like how do you do things like access control? How do you do things like your runtime behaviors, right? How do you start doing things like typing and dealing with issues like generics, which are really a big part of how uh, people in Java get their job done. So our answer to try to bring these two worlds together first was to understand the foundations of where uh, uh, they should come together at. And, and, and just recap that, that's syntactical, uh, uh, the uh, structural, and then ultimately the uh, semantic equivalence. And then as we go on, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about those and how we tackle them, and then ultimately how they come together uh, with the rest of the uh, VJet offering.